Gamescast episode 64, topic three. We're starting it right now. Who is it, Greg? Nina Freeman. She, oh, of course, man. works right now at Fulbright. She's working on Tacoma. I make fun of Tacoma and Steve Gainer a lot during this interview, but we're also talking a little bit about Cybelle mm. or Sybil, if you want to pronounce it correctly, which I never do because I played the game, loved the game, and I call it Cybelle. And if Nina wanted to pronounce the correct way, she probably should have just written it a normal way. More importantly, I'm spoiling what you're about to see, but there's a moment in this where I am mind blown that she is the one that created How Do You Do It? Yeah. The hit sensation that there's a let's play of over at youtube.com slash kind of funny games where me and Nick figure out how do you do it? Nina's a very special game developer and I was excited to talk to her. Hey everybody. It's me, Greg. This is Tim and this is Nina. Hi. We're going to talk about our game. Now, here's the thing out there. You're in this, we're live, obviously. The yes. camera never cuts. We're going to break these up as little conversations and whatnot. So I'm going to do a full blown intro here. Totally. Sybil. Right? Yes. Sybil. I was calling it Cybell forever. Everyone pronounces it in different ways, and I'm like, wow, I'm a bad game developer for naming my game <laughs> something like so weird to spell and say. Cybell is because of the pizza place. Yes, like exactly. Pizza, that is exactly why I do it. Which is classic and really good. Mm -hmm. You might want to reconsider making it Cybell because people like Cybell. Yeah. Yeah, if you could get a, if you could get a Cybell pizza sponsorship, that'd, that'd be, be really that good. That I would take. What's up, everybody? It's me, Greg. This is Tim, and this is Nina Freeman. Nina. Ooh. You made a game that reached out and touched my heart this year. Oh, I want you to I'm know so that. I'm so happy about that. It's called that. Sybil, not Cybelle. Not to be cute. <laughs> Either any way you spell it, you're going to find the game and get it. And it's spelled C-I-B-E-L-E. -E. I've learned to That's say marketing. that in That's everything. Because mm, yeah. <laughs> no one, everyone's mm. like, I can't find it on Google. And I'm like, you're spelling it wrong. <laughs> yeah, we learned the hard way too, where it's like, oh, you're kind of funny. And it's like, no, kind of. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but yeah. So you spell it this way. But it's still um, a good name. It's a good yeah. name. Um, now, the fun thing is, I feel like we have a connection because I've played this deeply personal game and right. we've tweeted a few times about it. Yeah. And then you know this hack I know named Steve Gaynor who doesn't put platinum <laughs> trophies in his games. But we've never actually met. So this is an interview where we're getting to know each other. Yes. Tim, of course, mm -hmm. hasn't played this game. I brought Tim along because this is a game Tim should play. Yeah. Ooh. And I want him to know more about it. What's not, more important than that is your Twitter. <gasps> yes. Your, I did not know that your Twitter was hentai PhD. That is my Twitter. <laughs> I, I like that a lot. I don't have a PhD in hentai. For mm. the record. So you're a liar. I'm a liar. Okay. I have masters. Not in hentai though. Gotcha. Like, gotcha. I just thought it was funny. And even when I started being like a real professional person, I was like, I can't change it. Like people yeah. are just going to have to accept me for who I am. I, I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> As someone who didn't know anything about you and yeah. then found you through, I think probably Steve retweeting you and doing some stuff mm -hmm. and then played the game and then started following. I, I think it all fits pretty well with who Nina Freeman is. Oh, you got the hair, good. you got the hentai PhD, <laughs> you got this game, you take sleeping bags and make them into dresses sometimes. Yes. I That's love a, to do that. <laughs> I like you. You're my type of person. I know. I know. I'm a big fan of sleeping bags. Just in general but as no, a I concept. Mean, like, like the children's sleeping bags with like, you know, bell on them and stuff like yeah. that. Is there any other type of sleeping okay, bag? Sorry. That's the only one that you want to yeah. get. Yeah, my sleeping should. bag has bell on it too. Have you done a real Ghostbusters one yet? Because I'll send you a real Ghostbusters one if you'll I'll do take it. it. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> um, let's, no, let's talk about Cybelle though. Sybil. <laughs> also, let's talk about I made it with StarMate Games. Shout out to the team. So, and that's the whole thing. So let's di dial me back to the beginning of mm -hmm. like, how did this game come to be? Sure. Um, so I guess for people who haven't played it or want to know what it is, it's a game about two young people who met in an online game, kind of like a World of Warcraft or something, and they have this relationship, and it's about how they decide to meet up to have sex um, in real life. Um, you Told play you like from... this game. <laughs> I really like this game. Yay. <laughs> and you play from Nina's perspective, the okay. character who is based on me. That's the name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it started as actually... I'm made the prototype in a prototyping class at NYU when I was a grad student. So it was originally a student game, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and then I made part of it for my master's thesis and then continued to work on it after school. Um, I, I'm a level designer at Fulbright right now in Tacoma. Um, and when I started working there, I was kind of finishing it up. Sure. Um, so and I've that's been... why Tacoma's delayed is because you had to put <laughs> out your own game. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I managed to finish it and do a lot of work on Tacoma all at once. I just worked <laughs> all the time. I went a little crazy there, um, but it was good. And I had a lot of support from them, which was really nice. Um, and yeah, we made it all on weekends and at night. So that was about a year and a half of work. So yeah, when uh, when did you graduate school? And then when you graduated NYU, did you immediately move out to work at Fulbright? Yep. Huh? Yeah, I literally defended my thesis and like a week later was on a plane headed Damn. to Portland. Wow. <laughs> it was crazy. That's, so when you say the character is based on you, yeah. personality wise and stuff, but is it mm -hmm. the look? Does it also look like you? Yeah, actually in the game, um, there's each act, there's three acts, um, three conversations between the two of them that sort of contextualize why and how they meet. 
later in the game. Um, and each of them is bookended by short films to sort of remind the player that, hey, this is a game about this character. You play most of it in first person, but it, it brings you out of the game to show you her and I play her. Uh, oh, cool. So that's kind of like weird that I'm like talking about it. it is my game, but I treat her more like a character. Um, but she's based on me and I play her as well. And that's the, that's it's hard to wrap your head around this one. And <laughs> yes. I didn't want to show it because it wouldn't show well or whatever. Yeah. But it's almost in, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but give me a second Go before you immediately slash me. Yeah. Think of it. <gasps> bless you. In a similar way to her story, except we're not getting the reflection of us in the monitor. Like we're at the computer. We turn on the computer and then we our mouse is her mouse. And so we get to open up stuff mm. on our desktop. Okay. and see what's happening in our life that way, like photos, this, that, and the other, and then double-click on the game to go into the game and then play the game and click around, and you're, you're playing the game inside of her game, like the game Nina in real life made, mm -hmm. but you're playing as Nina in the game while you play that, and then the conversations are happening over like a voiceover IP deal. So even though we're playing, oh, we're cool. hearing the things we, the character, are saying without making any choices ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so then this relationship starts to develop. So it's kind of like Emily is away. That we played. Sure. Mm -hmm. Except, but yeah, yeah, exactly. It's talking. And exactly, stuff. Mm -hmm. exactly. And there's no choice at all. But I mean, yeah. so like the story is just playing out as we cool. go and do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's this weird thing where, like at the end when I was like, and he broke our, in well, the spoilers, but you know, yeah. like, <laughs> how do you think this is going to end? Uh, you know, it, 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 I'm having these conversations with you about the character you play in the game, about the game you made, but then also it's, it's from your life as well, yeah. right? Mm hmm is th like so that's what's <laughs> mind-boggling about the whole thing and yeah. not even not to mention in this day and age and the internet and everything else mm -hmm. and how it toxic the climate can be to go tell a story this personal ripped from your real life yeah. but put into like at any point did you think maybe i shouldn't do this no so like my background i started out in poetry actually when i was an undergrad i worked in the new york poetry scene for a little while was an intern at the poetry project and all that stuff and in poetry, it's like pretty common practice for people to draw on their personal lives. And that is actually what my mentor back then, Charles North, sort of urged me to do and taught me in that way. So for me, it's been pretty natural to take that kind of stuff into games because it's sort of how I learned to write. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I guess also practice makes perfect. Like almost all the things I've worked on um, prior to Sybil have been drawn from my own life. So I've kind of gotten used to that feeling of putting myself out there, but it was definitely fun, like going back through my old live journals and old photos and stuff to like draw from them to put them in the game. Because a lot of that stuff is really like taken from actual source material that I like did make when I was like a teen. <laughs> Jeez Louise. This is yeah. great. <laughs> so then the question, I mean, becomes like, so well, let's stick with the personal part of it at first, mm -hmm. I guess. How do you then deal with people reacting? Because I have to imagine, mm -hmm. as with anything on the internet, yeah. people are then criticizing the choices in the game, but then in a way they're criticizing you because you really made those choices or some version of them. Yeah, so the way I think about it with this personal stuff is like, I really treat it like a story. Like, it is, saying like a lot, sorry. It is based on my own life, um, but I kind of treat my own memories as like source material that's like separate from me. It's sort mm -hmm. of this like mental exercise that I have to do because I don't want these games to be like my diary. Yeah. I'm more like interested in the craft of it and storytelling. Um, so, you know, I might not do personal games forever. I just really like the storytelling of aspect course. of it. And I love telling ordinary human stories and I happen to be an ordinary person. So my life is like a good source to draw on for that kind of story material. So when people criticize like the character or whatever, that's just normal. Like I take it like any game developer would, you know, just sure. like listen to what people say and take that as feedback, hopefully do better next time. Um, and I don't try not to take too personally. Gotcha. Yeah. And then what about, so you put this out there mm -hmm. and not open an old wound, but I mean, you're talking about this personal thing. Was Has there been any reaction from the guy? Has he, I mean, uh, we actually did chat about it. No which was shit, cool. really? Yeah, yeah. We oh, hadn't talked no. in like years. Oh, so it was no. kind of Tell me crazy. all about it. Oh. Yeah, no, I mean, it's this. weird because I feel like it's juice. gossipy, but it's like I lived this and I want to know what this, this motherfucker's is saying. <laughs> What's the oh, canon I mean, story here? We all love gossip, so I'm glad that my game can promote that in a way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is your director's cut can be the epilogue. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we chatted. Uh, it was cool. I didn't know if I could get in touch with him at first because I kind of wanted to be like hey is this cool with you because like but also no one really knows you right. know I didn't put any real names in the game other than my own sure and that's a practice you know I've had to get good at that making all these personal games I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable you know um, but I still you know I have the right to tell my stories so I go yeah. ahead and do it anyways um, but I got to chat with him and be like hey are you chill with this like how you doing and 
And he was like totally okay with it. So that was a very nice interaction to have. And it, it's surprising that a game can bring that out, I guess. Um, it does so often though. I think that's the thing is like, we all know mm-hmm. people that have yeah. some, some story that at some point relates to mm-hmm. we met over a game or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you, have you ever done that? Met people through a game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have friends like that. Mm-hmm. Not real life friends. Cause they live far away, but I've met them at events and stuff since mm-hmm. then. Okay. I mean, that's, yeah. that's enough real life and video games. What's the difference? Sure. No, I, I, I'm enough. with you. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying like, you know, her story is a lot different than my stories. Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm See, saying. I don't, I don't yeah. know her story yet. I'll have to play this. You will play this. Sounds cool. Yeah. 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 But excellent work. Thank now, you. Now, how many... So it's you, obviously. Did, mm-hmm. did you do everything? Like what... How does this work for so you? So I, wa- I am the designer and writer and sort of project manager and lead. Um, right. I made the original prototype and basically just asked a bunch of my friends to work on it with me because yeah. that's my style. I just like working with friends um, on these sort of personal side projects. So Emmett Butler, Rebecca Dunlap, Decky Koss, uh, Samantha Corey, a bunch of my friends came together. Um, they did, Emmett did programming, Rebecca did art, Decky did music. And I sort of was managing all of this and doing all the writing and sort of like putting things into the game and deciding how it would flow. Um, so managing all of that sort of in a creative lead capacity. Gotcha. Yeah. And so then like you, you put this game out, you hit your date. Is it just soul crushing to go into Fulbright and just like <laughs> just the dates keep moving and there's no trophies in any of the game and your boss is an idiot and doesn't know. <laughs> Steve. Ho! Oh. Hey, how are you doing? Steve, Steve you're Gator, I see you there. Oh, wow. Hey, how, no, how you doing? Steve. Oh, hello there, sir. Hey. Oh, she loves yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay, <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Steve. I won't ruin your cast too much. You're <laughs> ruining my life, Steve. <laughs> you're ruining my life. <laughs> so when you're working on this game and deeply personal, it's something I feel is really different, you know, in terms of games that I get to play and go out and do you know, actually get sit down and play something mm-hmm. we talk about all the time. Like who's doing new stuff? This is new. You know what I mean? In terms of storytelling. Thanks. Did you expect it? To hit, I mean, you just won an award last night. Did you expect it to do what it's doing? Or did you just think this is something you're going to put out and that'll be the end of it? Yeah, I didn't expect the award. That's for sure. That was a big honor. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting because it really did just start in school. Like, I actually have only been making games for three or four years now. Um, I'm relatively fresh. So you're Um, a wonderkind. I'm a a little kid in terms of game developer experience years. Um, So it's been cool to like, do well and have people be excited about ordinary human stories in video games. I know that more and more of that is happening these days and it feels really cool to be part of games and to be making that kind of stuff when other developers are getting really into it too. It feels like there's a wave Mm -hmm. of that kind of Mm -hmm. thing right now. Um, And I I feel good about contributing to that because it's really really important to me. Um, And I just feel so great that Sybil can sort of like be leading the way with these kinds of games and being a part of that movement and it's hugely inspired by Gone Home um, which obviously Steve never heard of the it. rest of Full right yeah <laughs> what's that game um, that was like the one of the main inspirations for the game oh, wow. so you know I'm kind of trying to follow in their footsteps so then ways. how does that work where you get to go work for them then yeah it's actually I don't know it was like kind of my dream job and I just met Steve and Carla at GDC like a couple years ago met him at a party we kept in touch um, and actually Steve um, and the rest of the team at Fulbright, but particularly Steve, I've been going back and forth with for a really long time before I even knew I was going to work mm. with them about Sybil. And you, met really him, you met him playing a, a game and the game is about him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I met him because he came up and played the game I worked on. How do you do it about the doll? You did you- that? Yeah. You did. How do you do it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Go check out the Let's Play YouTube.com slash kind of funny games where me and Nick. Loved that game. Oh, thank you and, so much. Oh yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. Thank you. You're my type of person. This Yay, is this is good. You're my type of person. Yeah. I like that you like See these you guys games. Like- <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so Steve liked that game, and then I was like, "Will you try my game, Sybil, and like give me feedback? I loved your work." Um, and so we've sort of have had that relationship ever since. So it's cool. It's cool to work with them now. It's like really a huge honor and amazing. So, I I hate doing this. But it's and it's a hackneyed question, but stick with me because I want to okay. drive to the point. Let's do it. <laughs> is it getting better? You're a female game dev. We mm-hmm. don't. We always talk about that. There's yeah. not enough of that. Is it getting more inclusive? We're, I, I, why? Why are you? How are you able to do it when it seems like it's such a hard thing to do? Yeah, um, it's definitely getting better. I mean, a lot of people are talking about it now and thinking about it um, and actively doing things to change that. I mean, 
I feel really happy to be at Fulbright because the company is like, I think it, half or more than half women at this point, which is amazing. Um, you don't see that every day, obviously. Yeah. Um, and for me, what I've been learning lately is that, you know, obviously there's a lot of, in culture in general, there's systemic sexism sure. in a lot of ways. And that's just the reality of our lives. So like, how can I do my work and just sort of like live with that and help change it? And I have been trying to help mentor young women getting into games and doing that sort of one-on-one -on -one thing that's been good for me. And also I've learned that it's really hard because yeah, this question comes up a lot, but for me- And that's like, why I hate asking, but I feel like it's neat. How do you, how do you solve said, the problem yeah. without address, mm -hmm. addressing the issue? And for me personally, what I've learned is that, you know, to answer that question, I just mentor and try and help other women get into it so that we don't have to keep asking that question every sure. year. And also, I want to be known as a designer and not like a woman in games. You know, mm -hmm. I want to be known for my work as a game developer. So I think it's important. I always am trying to like change the conversation around my games and trying to direct it into more about the craft rather than, oh, like, cool, a woman made a game. Like, right. I always want to be like, there's more to it than that. Like, 100%, I understand and that. And I just think that working to change that conversation is really important in addition to mentoring and mm -hmm. just being really open to new voices. And, and one of the things I like about you is that you're, is that you, um, I guess the way I, we always talk about it, right? That the best part about being kind of funny now and being independent mm -hmm. is that if somebody pops up in the chat and they're a dick, we say, get out. We don't want you. <laughs> we don't want your money. We don't want you to be a subscriber. Yeah. If you don't, if you're not chilling, whatever, then fuck off. You I know what I mean? That. And so what I like about that is in that same vein of just like, this is who we are unapologetically. I feel like that's who you are too. Like I was talking about it earlier with, you know, you're coming at this personal story in a time mm -hmm. where people are very mean at times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Granted, it's a very vocal minority. I know that, but mm -hmm. they can be, but you're in there. There's this game about sex. There's this game about you. You're putting your, these live action cutscenes or whatever are in some various states of undress and there's yeah. photos and there's all these different <laughs> things that like could easily be used as ammunition against you. But you're like, well, if you want to, there it is. And, but that's mm -hmm. not what this is about. And so by, acknowledging that and putting that out there and saying, this is who I am. You make yourself invulnerable to it. And in the same way I saw you tweet recently, probably within the last month or something about the fact that you were sick at, uh, conventions of people coming up and be like, Oh, did you do the art for this game? Yeah. And you're like, no <laughs> motherfucker. I made this yeah. game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I do always feel really good coming back at people like that and being like, I was the lead. I also wrote a ton of code in this game. So I did a little bit of everything and I feel really good about that. <laughs> good. Yeah. And that's what it should be. And that, that's why I'm excited that it's not like that. Kevin says there's 10 minutes left. Cool. What do you want to do with your final 10 minutes? I think, you know, on that topic, I'm happy to have made a game that, is sort of very feminine and very pink and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Cause I don't think we see many games like that. Um, I think of actually like Splatoon was a huge inspiration for me when oh, that wow, came really? out. I was like, not for Sybil directly, but just as a game developer, sure. I was like, Whoa, like look at this color palette. Like this is just a different look for games. And I just saw it appealing to so many different kinds of people. And a lot of people that don't normally play lots of games. And I just feel like, you know, introducing more feminine games or games like Splatoon that just have cool fashion and stuff like that. I think that's really amazing. And I'm glad to see like a company as big as Nintendo doing something as progressive as that. It was really, yeah. I've been impressed by, by Splatoon and that, that kind of stuff. So no. I like seeing those different kinds of games, not only from indies, but from like big developers as well. And that's, what's exciting. I, I, you know, we talk about it in waves in the fact of like, you know, right this last year, right. It was, oh my God, there's all these open world games, right. Mm -hmm. Which are a knee jerk reaction to three years ago, this open world game hit. And so mm -hmm. here are all these other ones. And so now like I was talking about, you know, uh, is our walking simulators games. And I fucking <laughs> hate that question too, or whatever They're games. they are. I agree. <laughs> but I love that genre. And I love the fact that now, you know, you've seen it now with gone home, you've seen mm -hmm. it with Firewatch which everybody had something to say about yeah. and then even with Tacoma like that will continue to go and you will see other not mm -hmm. only developers try to tell a story that way but I mean other big developers not mm -hmm. other just other indies yeah exactly yeah I like seeing how like indies can do something like like a Gone Home and you can see that sort of like trickling through the industry yeah, right. and other people trying to do stuff inspired by that and it's it's cool how we can all like be in conversation with each other as game developers. Um, I like that about making games. It's well, good. It's, I think it's, you know, 
game development and we always talk, I always talk about the spectrum right, of AAA now and indie mm-hmm. AAA with how much money gets involved they can't afford not to have a success right whereas mm-hmm. indies can come out and like the, it's like kind of funny right where we put up a video and it gets 30,000 to 50,000 views and we're like yeah hey, that's awesome because it, it doesn't like that's a fine number for us whereas a, a big site or a big a YouTube corporation whatever mm-hmm. that'd be a huge issue for yeah. indies can take the chances find out what the audience is willing to do mm-hmm. and then you can see that reflected somewhere mm-hmm. else yeah and that is what exciting like I'm, I'll never Forget coming home and playing Sybil. Yes. And sitting there and I was a little drunk and I was like, I had heard good things <laughs> and I, Steve had sold me on it and I sat down and played it all in one sitting at like two in the morning and yeah. it was like, this is great because this is something different. It's what Colin's always talking about when he's talking about PlayStation VR or the fact that everything's on PlayStation 4 right now could be on PS3. It's not like mm-hmm. we have this. I want different experiences and I want to see different voices like that. Yeah. Also, recommendation for playing Sybil light a candle and pour yourself a glass of wine. Mm. That is basically how I made it. I always had those two <laughs> things. The full so, yeah, for the full experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. You just reminded me of that. I'm glad no, you played I, it while you had, had a drink. <laughs> it's creepier though that I had lit a candle. I mean, candles are great. It makes no, them like, smell you know, good, so then you're in a good mood, and Ke- that Kevin, makes a better experience. It was that weekend where we went and bought all those candles. Remember that? <laughs> mm, mm. Kevin and I bought a bunch of candles. I do remember, remember that. that. Yeah, we yeah. went to Sir La Table, and then we went to Ikea, and they had a great sale on candles. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a big good. candle guy. So <laughs> maybe I'm just doing like it. Candles? I think I'm just doing it wrong. I don't know. I can get down on some wine, though. Wine I get. I mean, you need more than one candle. You know, like mm. one candle is like. Lame. So you need candles. Yeah, okay. candles. Yeah, okay. plural. <laughs> That's what I'm doing wrong. I've, I've only been lighting one candle, so maybe maybe if I get a couple candles, we'll see. You get them all mixed around the house. Okay. Yeah, you're doing pretty good. Okay. Okay. I'll try that. Okay, good. <laughs> red or white for the um, wine? Red. Yeah. 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 No, okay. Nobody wants white. Yeah, white's it's a little weird, unless yeah. it's a hot day. Yeah. Because yeah, white's colder. Sure. You no, you're, yeah, it should it. be chilled. It should you're be chilled for chilled sure. It's a day drinking thing i yeah. think white wine is sure. okay yeah <laughs> is your game a day a day game or a night game a night game a night i mean it's all like about game. sex yeah. and a lot of it it takes place in dark rooms so mm. it feels like maybe not totally night but like with yeah some let's not limit ourselves lights. but yeah. Yeah, i don't want to limit myself to only night sex like that's actually yeah. me also, yeah. time. <laughs> i was wondering why you're in the bathroom so long. no <laughs> that's the thing about the game is that it's weird because you think about games and setting a scene and doing all these different things and you think about okay well the last of us and beautiful vistas and this that and the other mm-hmm. whereas your game is staring at a computer monitor mm-hmm. but being there i wanted to play it in the dark poor, dimly lit because mm-hmm. like i'm envisioning how in the, you, the characters are in college for part of it or yeah. n- the whole thing or just part of it uh, it's been a while. the whole thing yeah great but mm-hmm. i remember when i would play games in college right and i was hunched over my little yep. desk sitting there doing mm-hmm. talking about other people and yeah. it is supposed to be like you're sitting there embodying Nina as you're playing it. So yeah. you're like her sitting in the chair at your computer clicking around. It's kind of like the game tries to connect your hands to her hands, That's cool. basically. Um, which is, it's funny, like her story also does that. All, like a lot of these desks, the people are calling them desktop simulators. Oh my I guess. God, is that a thing now too? <laughs> I think that's a thing uh, now and I actually kind of love it. I I'm like, like that a lot. I mean, yeah. no away. Sure, but I'm, yeah, but cool. you understand, mm-hmm. don't, don't take the, it's okay if we grab it and we adopt it. Yeah. But people use walking simulators say it's not a game, well, it's a walking simulator. That's no, true. That's Just dumb. throwing it out there. I, I'm i taking it back. Yeah. Walking We're simulators are awesome. Yeah. Desktop simulators, Desktop simulators, awesome. Desktop simulators. Any simulator. We're always talking about the kind of funny game that could be it. <laughs> yeah, it's just okay. a desktop simulator where you Watching go to an Excel, YouTube? you go to an Excel grid, and you fill in metadata. Oh no! And then you make the you make the you make Photoshop thumbs, and we yeah. like you got a percentage on how great it is. Up the vibrancy on all the thumbnails. <laughs> yep, that's I'd how play you that. gain mo- maximum points. Okay, yeah, it, you go to Google to search you, like, whatever it's about. If it's about we're doing a video about Oreos, you put in Oreos. And then hit, and then you only get fifty percent of the points. But if you put in sexy Oreos, as Tim would hit search, you get all the points. It works. It works. I like this. Anyway, <laughs> we're taking it back. Do you want to make That's this? Do you want this to be your next game? You yeah. want to make the kind I'll of funny? I'll take it. Yeah, Don't let's do it. It's not let's worth it. it. <laughs> Trust me. So that that is a, a good jumping off point. So Sybil's out. Sybil is out. You can get it's, it now. It's been out forever. Mm-hmm. How long has it been out? Uh, it, I ran into it, you know, a few months ago. It came out like in February. <laughs> I oh, can't okay. even remember <laughs> anymore. It's all a blur. But yeah, um, a couple months ago. You're hard at work on Tacoma with the Steve Gaynor guy. Yeah. And I'm sure he's not just leading you off into the ether, this <laughs> game that'll never come out. Uh, do you are you do you start working on another one on your own? Like how, how do you balance your time? Um. Right now, I'm totally focused on Tacoma and and doing my level design work there. Um, but, you know, I find making games fun and I like do it on the weekend sometimes, like a game jam or something like that. Sure. I recently was commissioned for this event in No Quarter um, in New York City, or called No Quarter, um, and I made a game for that. Actually, while we were finishing Civil Up, which was crazy. I don't know why I did that to myself. 
but hopefully we'll release it at some point in the future. It's an eight-player car combat dating sim racing game. Jesus fucking Christ, yeah. I love you. <laughs> Walking simulator. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, I wanted, so, you know, when you make a game like Sybil, people, it's easy for people to expect you to make more games like that in the future, and sometimes that's really cool if you're iterating on on an idea that you're really passionate about, but I like, you know, going and doing something totally different just to keep myself feeling fresh. Um so I was like, I'm going to make a racing game and like just see how that works. And it's still kind of about like it's about sexiling your roommates, basically. So it's still got that narrative. Sexiling? Twist. Yeah. Like what's sexiling? You know, when you live with people and you're like going on a date and you want to take your date home. But like you don't want to like be doing it while your roommates are in the room. So you got to lock them out. I'm making a note of this. <laughs> this is great. Sexiling? Sexiling is the best. Okay. That, that needs to be a love and sex stuff topic. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, I have, I have two questions that you might have already answered, but <laughs> I want to make sure that, that, I, that I hit on them. So what award did you win? Nuovo. What's that mean? Um, it is a category for games that basically don't fit neatly into the other categories. So often like more experimental leaning games, games that are doing stuff that's like really different. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'm excited to be considered someone doing something very different. It's yeah, awesome. That's great. Yeah. And the second thing is why is it called Sybil? So the name of the game is actually the name of my real avatar from when I was playing Final Fantasy Online, which is sort of when I had this experience in my actual life. So shout outs to the Sylph server <laughs> um, <laughs> in Final Fantasy Online. That's where I played. Um, and my character was called Sybil. Um, and I actually stole that name from a girl I really admired in high school. It was her AIM username. Awesome. And this is the spelling she used and she pronounced it Sybil. And I've been using it as my handle in online games ever since. That's awesome. And now there's a game. Yeah, now yeah. there's a game. About it. That's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Nina. Yes. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you. This Sybil's is so available fun. now. Everyone yep. go get it. Follow her on Twitter. Hentai PhD. <laughs> <laughs> Look for Tacoma soon. Did I plug everything? Yeah. Uh, Sybil is at SybilGame.com. Sure. Um, and there's trailer, cool trailer for Tacoma at Tacoma-Game.com. There so you go. You can check those out. Okay. Until next time. It's been a pleasure to serve you. Bye.